Danny Shapiro, Israel's chief test pilot, can't believe the news. Pilot said to me, hey, you know, just an hour ago, uh, MiG-21 landed in Chatzor. Probably you will be the one to fly. I, I thought they were joking, you know. I said, ah, don't give me that wood. But the next morning, he's in front of General Mahdi Had. He looked at me, you know, smiled, and he said, look, Danny, you're going to be the first Western pilot in the world to fly a MiG-21. I said, well, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. This is actual footage of Shapira inspecting the MiG-21. Shapira is briefed by the Iraqi pilot. Russian and Arabic writing in the cockpit is replaced with English and Hebrew. And within only a few days, Shapira closes the canopy and lifts the MiG-21 smoothly into the bright Mediterranean sky. I didn't have any problem. The rate of flying was excellent. The airplane was lighter. At least 2,000, 2,200 pounds, less than, uh, than a Mirage. After becoming familiar with the airplane, Shapira, and only Shapira, begins flying against senior Israeli fighter pilots. We made a program to train our pilots and see how a MiG-21 maneuvers and what a Mirage has to do in order to stay behind of a MiG-21 and shoot it down. We conducted 120 flights and, you know, uh, practiced against them to see the airplane, to be familiar with the airplane, to see in several different uh, silhouettes. And it was amazing. The Israelis learned that the MiG-21 is light and fast. But at high speed and low altitude, the control surfaces become sluggish and unresponsive. Worst of all, the airplane has terrible rear visibility. So I said to them, if you go down slightly, 500 feet below the MiG, he'll never see you. you if, if you see a MiG doing this, it means that he's looking for you. He doesn't see you, but he's looking for you. Once he start to turn, get in and shoot. But the Israelis also come to appreciate the airplane's essential Russian qualities, especially the ease of maintenance. It's like what we said at the time, it's like a Volkswagen. Fuel and go, fuel and go, and again and again. One of the things about the Russians is they learn how to design an aircraft in a high, efficient, low-cost manner. They didn't even have flush riveting, and some of the seams were really rough. But who cares? It still can go Mach 2, and it was efficient, it was fast, it was maneuverable. And if it doesn't last more than a couple days in combat, make it cheap. The intelligence coup helped the Israelis devise winning tactics during the Six-Day War. Israeli pilots destroy 58 enemy aircraft in air-to-air -air combat against a loss of 10 of their own. A remarkable achievement. Over the next